Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? This is Deathwish from Grandmaster Gamers, and I'm with Eric Peterson, or Eric Wingman Peterson. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. Eric Wingman Peterson. How are you? All right. Um, now, you've got a game in the works. You just started up your own studio. You've just uh, set up your Kickstarter. You have about 15 days left on the Kickstarter. Uh, do you want to tell us anything about the game, or tell us from your perspective what your dream is for this game? All right, well, so we um, we left Star Citizen, uh, some of us left Star Citizen and, and decided to do our own thing. Much like Chris is following his passion, we decided to follow ours. And uh, we're, we rebooted the Descent franchise. So we were very big Descent addicts back in the 90s, and it's just been languishing on the shelf for 16 years. And so we decided to get together and let's let's make Descent, but, but more than that, Let's bring Descent into the modern era with uh, with things that have been added to the first-person shooter genre since that time. There, it's, it's no longer just okay to fly around and shoot things. You know, there's also now class systems, leveling up, unlocks, lots of modern gameplay advances. So, you know, one of the things that drove me was my 16-year-old and 12-year-old have never played Descent. You know, and so I was like, man, that's ridiculous. And you know, and for them, when they look at the old one, they could they could currently play the old one from GOG or Steam, but it looks bad. It's a 1995 blocky looking thing. And so for them, they, they just won't play it, you know? So it's like, I want to bring that cool experience I had with Descent into the modern era and, and spread it, spread it amongst a whole new generation of gamers that have never gotten the chance to experience it. Now, from what I understand is you actually got the Descent IP. How did that yeah. go down? Well, when we left, we decided we were going to make a Six Degrees of Freedom game, um, and we we're going to call it Ships That Fight Underground, which was our working title, or STFU, because we thought that was funny. Um, and then somebody contacted us from Interplay and said, hey, since you're already doing that game, you know, would you like to, would you consider making an actual Descent game? And we're like, yeah, of course, right? And so, you know, we took it and ran with it and started the negotiations and, you know, licensed a trademark. And you've worked with uh, Star Citizen as well. Now, when you were working with that, did you, uh, how much of that did you actually work on and um, what part of, or what part of the project were, did you think that you had to leave? Because we've heard all sorts of different stories on that and I was just wondering, um, is there an official story from you yourself? Yeah, of course. I mean, so I was one of the originals, on, you know, one of the founders, one of the people at Star Citizen. I went through the whole um, crowdfund campaign, went through the Kickstarter, was there from day one, and you know, actually wrote the PowerPoint Chris used when he announced it um, on stage. I was there for the two years. Um, I ran the Austin office. Originally, when we decided to do the game, um, we were going to do the core in Austin, and Chris was going to have a small strike team in LA, and then we would outsource a lot of stuff because. You know, we weren't sure how much funding we would need, or you know, where we we're going to be, and, and, and or at least, sorry, we weren't sure. We wanted to protect the investment to make sure that we weren't spending too much, and so um, ultimately, that got to be too much of a hassle for Chris to have to drive around. And as we expanded and started, as as basically Star System took off, and more and more revenue came in, to where then you could actually bring more of the game closer to the front than the back then Chris's time got more and more divided. So it got to be pretty clear that he needed to have um, his senior chiefs around him and in order to properly work. And so I understood that. And, you know, he said, you know, let's let's move you to L.A. And I was like, no, <laughs> not not going to happen. I mean, there's a story behind that, too. I mean, I love the game and love working on it. But, you know, I worked on Star Lancer and I traveled back and forth to England for almost a year and a half and you know we almost split my marriage of, I missed my son's first steps I missed his first soccer goal I missed all this stuff and I promised my wife I would not do that again I'm not moving for for a game which you know just didn't make sense so as much, it was much as I love Star Citizen I love my family more and so just yeah. just, just chose them and oh, thought well I want to do my thing that's some honorable dedication right there. I do uh, commend you for that. Um, and I like I like Austin. Austin. I'm an Austin person. I like the feel, the vibe here. I, you know, L.A. is not my favorite town. San Francisco I like a lot. L.A. is kind of, you know, too Hollywood for my taste, to be honest. Don't really like it that much. Yeah, all right. So on your Kickstarter right now, uh, at what point are you in your Kickstarter? You're asking for $600,000 for the game. We're about halfway through the Kickstarter, and we're about halfway through the funding. So it is a... We're tracking okay. Uh, it'd be nice to be already there, but we're not. And 
Um, so we're pretty confident we're getting there. We there's always a big spike. Most most Kickstarters that are successful, all the all the trends we've looked at say we're fine, but you still until you get there you're not. And so most of them do 25% in week one, 25% in weeks two and three, and then 50% in the last week. So we're tracking right where we should be. Mm -hmm. um, be great if we could go faster. <laughs> I know my wife would like that. I know all the guys in the office would like that. But at the same time, it is what it is. I mean, truthfully. Getting Descent so late in the game and getting Descent in itself came with a little bit of, um, well, not so much baggage, I'd say, but it came with a little, some challenges. There, there, you've got, there were some, you know, some people own the IP, some people own the assets. The Descent 1 and 2 players don't really play with the Descent 3 players who don't, so it's like all these little machinations over these years have gone on as it's been booted and rebooted, and it almost takes a un un a party that is sort of out on the side to come in and go, hey, let's all make this happen. And so that's kind of where we are. And, and there's some challenges there. Some of the original Descent community is very, very, um, they're still playing. And they're very, very, uh, this is how Descent is, very locked in the way it will be. And we're, you know, we're not, we're doing that with the classic mode, but that's not the main game we're making. The main game is much bigger than that. Yeah, I was watching uh, Twitch about a week ago when I saw a bunch of people playing it, so I don't know if it was your momentum that got people to start playing it or if people just are not that dedicated to it. So I'm super excited to actually get into it. I personally have never had too much of the honor to play Descent back in the day. I've only played it like once or twice, but as a kid, you got to use the games that your parents buy you, so that was yeah. where I fell at, or failed at. Um, but uh, I also noticed you have a Kickstarter, or not, not the Kickstarter, um... The Steam Greenlight, which, yes. by the way, all that stuff is going to be in information below if you guys want to check that out. Sweet. Um, yeah, we're we're tracking very well there. We're we're already at like what number are we right now, Phil, on Steam Greenlight? We blasted in two days to the top one. What number? We're number eighty-three already in the top one hundred. And, and our if you look at we got the data, it shows our track. We're killing it. Three to one. You oh, know, I people bet. Want it, and so it's um. That's a good deal. So we and hope that broadens our audience. Don't knock my buddy out of the top 25. <laughs> hey, man. It's going to be killed. Yeah, that no that is. All right. So, like, with that uh, Steam green light, if you don't end up making it to the uh, 600,000 mark, do you still plan on trying to release the game? Um, I don't know the answer to that question right now. We've, we've got everything locked into doing this um, this campaign. Um, if it doesn't come up, we'd have to we have to honestly look at whether or not our messaging or the audience that is out there actually wants this game and so you know this is kind of one of the reasons you do kickstarters is to find out that you know is this game a viable product do people really want it i mean right now we've got about 20 people working on it and nobody's getting paid in fact i'm losing money every day by working on this project but, but it's by passion right yeah. so you know the lights around you're on we're in an office space all that stuff is you know comes out of the pocket and so Everybody that's on is doing this out of passion with the hopes that there is that audience out there. So the honest answer to that question is, I don't know. Huh. Well, I so definitely would hope to that, see it. We've got some people that might be willing to fund it, but if you're a, if you're an investor and you look at the Kickstarter and it doesn't make it, then you know, you're know you kind of – there's a lot of leap there, isn't there? Um, yeah, I mean you still have a very impressive amount though, and that's why I'm, I'd be shocked that even if you did, uh, didn't get the 600K uh, – with how much you've already put into it, I'd be shocked to not to see that you wouldn't be able to do it still. But well, don't forget, don't forget. I, I don't know game developer or d game development as much as you. So right. Well, the problem is you can't ask people to work um, for too long for free. They just can't. It, yeah. No, it, it I completely fall apart. understand. And so right, that's why you do the Kickstarter so that then people can start getting paid and you you can actually start making the game and then and then one of the reasons we're doing like uh, voluntary transactions or microtransactions after the fact is that. So we can add to the game, and so the, our goal here is to build Descent up into like many phases and tiers. I mean, it, the truth is, if we wanted to make like the big game that's in all of our heads, it's 20 million bucks. It's like persistency, it's it's gravity, it's all these different levels and things to do. But we wanted to bite off the core gameplay first, make it fun, make it engaging, and then use the money from that to step to two, step three, step four, that kind of thing. Yeah. So we're kind of doing this in a smart linear fashion kind of the way like Chris were done first so. kind of the way Chris Roberts was looking at it originally yeah but he was able to actually go wider quicker because the money took off for him so you know he could go out and then you know maybe first person was later but now it can be brought forward and so he's able to kind of bring some things forward and that's that's sort of um, 
the benefit of the money, but it's also harder to manage time-wise because it's it's that's that's exactly why I'm not there anymore because I can't, you know, I couldn't be in LA. I mean, it's just harder for him to manage all that stuff, and so he needs people around him that he can turn around and go, "What's going on with this? What's going on with that?" and and they're right next to him that they can immediately answer rather than having to say, "Oh, dang it, it's eight o'clock at night. Eric's already gone home. I can't." You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's it just. It just makes it more convenient for him, and it's his, it's his project, it's, it's his passion. So, you know, this is mine. Yeah, totally. Are you going to be doing any uh, cross promotion with Star Citizen, like Shroud of the Avatar? Like, um, if you donate about so that. much, we talked about that. I, you know, we asked, but um, they've already given us a nice comlink shout out. I think Chris is going to do another thing coming up. We talked a little bit about that, but we talked a bit about doing some sort of cross promo. I'd like to do it, but I think. From them, I, I don't think it really works for them so much anymore. It wouldn't really drive their stuff. So um, from our end, we'd be happy to. But I think that from their end, it does. I don't think it makes a lot of sense for them right now. So there's nothing planned at the moment. All right. Um, yeah. Is there any other things about the game you want to bring up before we bring this to an end? Well, no. I mean, it's if you haven't played Descent, it's a Six Degrees of Freedom game. And you know, the one of the things we've we've had to do is explain what that means and so we'll be updating our kickstarter page which shows a lot of that stuff and six degrees of freedom means you can actually move up down side side back back all over it you're like in a, in a, in a zero g environment and mm -hmm. you're in a contained space and you can move up and down and shoot and, you know combat mining drilling um nine different ship types it's it's a lot it's going to be a fun game it's it's going to be um, it's not a MOBA. It's it's a first-person shooter. Some people have likened it to a MOBA. It's got some MOBA elements in the fact that we've got a online server and people are going to be logging in and playing as teams. So that part is a little bit of that, but it's not really a typical MOBA. MOBAs are actually RTS games, but yeah, I think a lot of people. There's there's you know what's funny we found during the campaign is there's a lot of mis mis un, misunderstanding of what definitions really are. Like some people think. Pay to win is, is microtransactions, and that's not necessarily true. No. Pay to win generally means you can acquire something only through money that others can't get. So and gives you an advantage. So it's kind of it's funny that the Kickstarter has really opened our eyes as to a lot of things that are misconceptions out there in the audience. And and we've spent a fair amount of time having to, you know, explain those things. Um you know, this is a question I forgot to ask. Um, what are your Kickstarter um, deals currently? Could you run th down some of the basic ones that oh, might? Sure. I'm actually on the. I'm actually on the page as always. We're all, all of us in the office are constantly looking at it. Um, yeah, so you can essentially get in the game for for twenty five bucks, and at twenty five dollars, the game will eventually cost forty nine ninety nine or something like that when it comes out. So it's fifty percent off because we believe that you're actually taking a risk and backing us early, which which we appreciate, and that allows us to make the game. Without that, it doesn't happen. So that, that twenty five dollar pledge gets you a digital copy of the game and and basically the Wasp ship, which is kind of your general purpose ship. Then you can, go, but then they, they can go up, and all these everything I'm going to talk about can be unlocked by simply playing the game. You can buy the $25 level and never spend another penny and get everything that we're, that we're gonna have there. You know, you've got, now that the $35 is sort of like the 25, but it, now it has beta access. It's called Material Defender. So I, you know what I would do? I'd rather than me going through all of those because it's kind of nuts, just go check out the page. Basically, there's a bunch of things that will allow you to help support the development community, but also get, get you more like you can buy more of the ships to start, so you won't have to unlock them. You actually have them from the get-go. Um, there's things like allow you to be part of the development team. There's an advisory board that people can be on. There can be in the design meetings with us. Um, all kinds of fun stuff on there. Uh, usually a package, a package for everyone. And we'll be updating it because some of our packages are sold out now. And we're like, well, gosh, we'd like to, you know, people still still want to do that, so we'll have to find ways of doing that too. So it's fun. It's it's a great experience. And you said something to me uh, a few months ago. You are actually currently looking for more people to work on the project as well. Yeah, uh, what type yeah. of uh, what type of positions are you looking for? Well, so one of the things we want to be at, at Descent is there's talent all over the world, all over the world, and a lot of times you don't have access to being part of a development team. And so one of the things we want to do is is through our forums, we're going to allow people to create stuff for us, be part of the process. You know, and, and get recognized, and if, if their stuff is good enough, it'll actually make it into the game. So, you know, if it's approved, so to speak, you know, you've, you've got to be careful on the interwebs about having stuff that is, you know, not necessarily approved for all audiences. Well, of course, 98% porn, you got to be picky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
We have a bunch of giant things on people's side of their ship. So, but the point is, um, if we become descendant students university and we're going to allow modding of the game, modding of the maps, modding of ships, you know, all this different stuff will allow people to do it. Now, that being said, in order to get that into the greater, you know, the greater universe, it's going to have to go through an approval process. But, you know, if they're tooling around at home or with their friends, they're going to be able to do whatever they want. And that's, that's kind of the key. So we want to let people, if somebody creates a ship that we really like, it's really good, we'd consider, put, we'd probably put it into the forum, see what people think. If they really like it, maybe it makes its way into the game and the, and the creator actually shares in the revenue. So that's kind of the fun. That's kind of what we want to do. That'd be cool to see. Um, there is one question I have. Um, I, I remember in Descent, you couldn't really take damage from bouncing off the walls. Now, is that going to be the same for this? I mean, it's a newer yeah. game, AAA, is damage from the walls, is that going to be no. in there? Or is that no, going to be don't... strictly for fun, take it out completely? Or The number one thing that we're, we're doing on Descent is it's going to be fun. No matter what happens, every decision needs to be fun. It's not going to be true Newtonian physics. We don't want that. We want, to, we want gameplay. And so... Um, Bouncing off walls is probably going to be more of a strategy, and I don't, I don't see it really hurting you. That being said, that's all going to be coming out in the balance as, as we do that within the Proving Grounds in August with our community involved. So they'll let us know what we want to do, and we'll, we'll do that. If, I, I don't see us. We've got one ship that rotates, mm -hmm. so that would just spin off all over the place and be impossible if you hit the wall. So, um, yeah, I don't think so. And that's exactly what I would expect from an old-time developer such as yourself. Yeah. And now, by the way, what other games have you and your uh, current de developers worked on? Oh man, there's there's a huge variety of uh, experience here, all the way from Ultimas to Wing Commanders to Privateers to Star Lancers to Concourse for Cheer Wars to Crusaders to um, Gods and Heroes. I mean, it's just tons and tons of stuff. The experience that uh, we're surrounded by here, and it's truly amazing that people are taking this risk together. Um, that alone is really cool. There's a lot of really talented folks that are here helping make this happen. Ah, oh, that's phenomenal. I can't wait to see this game actually fully come to fu or fu uh, fruition. Jeez, fruition. Can't say. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, like this game is just making me pumped. I know, just like Star Citizen, it kind of brings me back to the, how I felt when I saw Star Citizen um, Kickstarter. I was just like, oh my gosh, finally. And yeah. I personally am excited for it. Um, I can't wait to see it. Definitely, if anybody wants to know more about it, the uh, links for the Kickstarter and the green light will all be in the description below. Go check those out. And uh, yeah, totally. Thank you so much for having this interview with me today. Cool, thanks. And listen, if you if you if it's not your type of game, well, tell it to somebody who it is their type of game. These only work if people spread the word and oh, yeah. find out. And th thanks very much for doing this, man. All right. Have a good one. But specifically, really single player. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why we have to charge for that. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, you can't, you can't, it's, it's a triple A game. We're making a really high end experience. Exactly. And, you know, it,